So when you think of core sampling, which was where we left off in the last video, you think of taking a sample of the sediments and rock at the bottom of the ocean. And so a lot of people think of sand as something that's on the beach. Uh, and you see here on the, on the, on the screen two, two um, examples of that. And you can actually see there's a difference between uh, those two types of sand and that I'm sure in your life if you have went to two different kinds of be beaches you probably noticed that sometimes the, the beach has fine grand sand, sometimes it's a little more coarse, a little more rocky, and sometimes it's even more shells uh, mixed in with the sand. So the actual type of sand that's in a beach depends on the actual um, location, the life forms that live there, and what kind of rivers there are nearby, the kind of erosion that's taking place and so forth. But what most people fail to realize is that that same sediment uh, will continue to progress all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. So that even in the deep ocean you're still gonna have that same kind of sand. And so the ocean will go, as you see here, into the, in, into the depths of the, of the continental uh, shelf, then the slope, then the uh, abyssal plain, and finally into the trench. And all of that you will find sediments like these at the bottom of the ocean and um, look another picture here you see how the bottom of the ocean is covered with sand and so where does all that sand come from uh, what is the origin of all this sedimentation that is at the bottom of the ocean so in this vit in this screen on the top top right side it actually hints as what the source of these sediments are for example you see a satellite image on at 1979 uh, of a river delta and the spread of the sediment as seen from above on the on the actual satellite image you can actually see the the sediment deposition coming from the river uh, mixed in with the actual water of the of the ocean and you can see that uh, the detail here of the river actually splitting into several branches which then throw in sediment into the ocean which spreads with the currents all this way but that as humans uh, started playing with the river and modifying the river delta and actually growing a city in this area, it actually blocked the flow of the river delta and not only did it cause an erosion pattern and sedimentation that it created a new peninsula, but it actually changed the entire sediment flow and as you can see in the image and then it also changed the sedimentation of the entire bay. Now all deeper into the bay you see uh, the sedimentation happening and so this is it's a way to show you how the human impact on, on the changes of the actual flow of the rivers actually change the sedimentation pattern. So it hints to the fact that a lot, one of the biggest reasons for sedimentation is actually the rivers. So what are these sources of, of sediments in the oceans? Well, there are two types. There's inorganic sources and organic sources. Inorganic sources are the non-living sources for sediments. And these are things like... Um, Meteor dust, that's right, If we, when we get hit by meteors or uh, uh, dust from the co comet tails or asteroids and things like that, every time we have a meteor shower and we get hit by meteors, uh, the dust from the meteors has a 75% chance of falling in the ocean since most of the earth is covered with water. And so uh, a lot of the ocean sand is actually meteor dust. Also, uh, there's a lot of dust that comes from volcanic eruptions. When those volcanoes send all that ash up into the atmosphere, again, a 75% chance that that ash is actually going to rain down into the oceans. And so a lot of the ocean floor sedimentation actually comes from, the, from, the, from that. And you can actually notice that in, in coarse sediments when you see a, a, th a, th a thick, dark layer of sand. It's most commonly associated with things like volcanic eruptions, and you can find that all around the area where the volcano would happen. Uh, another way, reason is also chemical weathering of hot or rocks, and you see that in the middle here, when the water constantly hits a rock either in the open ocean or in the bottom of the ocean or even on the shoreline, uh, chemical reactions be between the particles in the water and the salts dissolve in the water versus the rock actually end up destroying the rock into tinier little bits, and you can actually see the example of that here in the middle. But the major, but number one contributor for sedimentation is actually uh, erosion followed by deposition. So in other words, water that's running off, off the continents into the oceans. And you can see here a river delta on the top left, and you can see how as the river hits the oceans, you see this flow of sediments hitting the oceans. And you also have erosion of the waves against the shoreline, and you see that here, here, and here, and you can see that it actually carves into rock and into dirt and, and, and it creates a new um, shoreline and those pieces of rock will be um, eroded 
and weathered into smaller bits which actually become sand so a lot of the beach is actually sand coming from from erosion of by waves and by also rivers and glaciers as they cut through the lands and carry the runoff are also uh, contributing to the erosion plus deposition of sand in the formation of o oceanic sediments um, and you see here a uh, graphical representation of the same thing that I was talking about and I think that will come back uh, in the next slide now when you look at the rivers deltas which is the number one reason for sedimentation of the oceans you see that rivers will deposit large amounts of material on top of the actual sand that was created by erosion by the waves so you have the uh, the um, like I mentioned in the previous video you actually have the continental shelf which is eroded by constant wave motion against the shelf into a, in a gradual slope uh, as, the, uh, as it gets deeper and deeper, less and less erosion happens, and that's why you get that gradual slope. So this is the original rock bed of the, of the continental shelf. And then you have the bar sand, which is the sand that forms near the shoreline because of wave, wave erosion of the actual continent, continent. But then the top set bed is the, is the, is the, the sand that's being depo deposited by the actual river or marsh that's actually hitting the, the sandbar. And that creates this, these sandbars that carry a lot of material. Now, with the currents, they actually get deposited further and further into the water, especially as they're, if they're finer and finer, they go further and further. So you get fine clays and silts and then fine sand, and then you're going to get the bar sand on the back. So you actually see this pattern of, of deposition, which uh, is all related to the, to the way the rivers hit the oceans. But a lot of the sand that's in the oceans actually comes from runoff off the continents. Erosion and deposition out of the rivers. Deposition is when the sand just settles down into the ocean. Um, and erosion, obviously, is when the uh, rock gets eroded into smaller bits, in, which is the sand. Now, we do this in more detail when we actually do river erosion later in the year. Now, our other uh, sources for sedimentation is also uh, organic sources. I, but actually, before I do that, uh, I also want to point out that rivers... Uh, can also be frozen like glaciers and frozen rivers like glaciers also flow through the land little by little you like whole glaciers moving through it and it will carry pieces of rock and things like that with it and just like a river would the difference is that sometimes those those pieces of sand and rock get trapped inside of big icebergs and those icebergs form when they the glacier hits the ocean and the, uh, it melts and in big chunks and as those, ch those chunks travel down the currents of the oceans and eventually melt off Miles from the actual delta of the of the of the glacier, the pieces of rock and debris that's stored inside the glacier's iceberg will actually fall into the ocean. So, with glacier deposition, can actually happen miles from the actual ocean because the the currents get uh, take the the icebergs away before they melt and, de and deposit their their contents. Uh, they, they picked it up during the runoff of their of their thousands of years of motion from the actual mountain heads to the to the ocean. Now, the other source of sedimentation is organic sources. Now, organic sources are biogenic or living material that dies and settles to the floor as the corpses, basically, of li li living forms. And that is the responsible for the formation of ooze, which is a, a type of uh, sediment that's like basically leftover dead stuff that forms at the bottom of the ocean. So a lot of the sand that is in the bottom of the ocean is actually dead stuff. Now, there's two main categories of... Of, of life forms that are, which are mostly responsible for the sedimentation of the ocean and the first one would be diatoms and radiolarians which are silica based um, life forms and by that I mean that they have exoskeletons or exostructures uh, they secrete a material to protect themselves which is rich in silica and so that's why a lot of the sand of the ocean has is rich in this element called silicon because this of the silica or, or uh, silicon ox oxide which is secreted by these things so you see here on the left side of the screen these uh, spherical circular shaped um, um, algae basically they're producers photo photosynthesizers uh, photo phytoplankton which are living in the water they're called diatoms and when these things die even though they're microscopic they fall to the bottom and they gather up and they create sand and this sand is rich in silica and then it's also uh, radiolarians and you see him here they're called radiolarians because they have this radio symmetry and you see the two examples of them here there's another radiolarian right there and there's also tiny microscopic organisms which are silica uh, rich and when they die they basically um, 
fall to the bottom and create sand. And this is ooze. Uh, another version is the um, Foroaminians, and this is calcium carbonate rich. And so instead of being rich in silica, they're rich in calcium carbonate. And that's the kind of stuff that corals is made of and seashells. And so these are microscopic shelled animals. And you see all, all of them here. See how they have these little shell shapes? And these are like tiny little organisms or animals which are shelled organisms and have uh, exoprotection made of calcium carbonate. And, and when they die, they fall to the bottom and create this uh, ooze that's rich in uh, calcium carbonate and, and shell-like materials. And so you have that very coarse sand. And so uh, these animals and these microscopic organisms are, are the reason why there's so much uh, sediments in the actual water. Now, the if you look at a map of the distribution of sediments across the world, you will actually see that there's a lot of sedimentation in the water, uh, especially near the continents. And you notice that in the middle of the oceans, far away from the continents, so look here, uh, in the middle of the Pacific, or in the middle of the Atlantic, or in the middle of the Indian Ocean, or there's barely any uh, sediments. And where do you see the majority of the sediments? You see them around the continents. Why is that? Well, because it's on the continents that you're going to have the chemical weathering of hot rocks taking place. It's on the continents that you're going to have erosion of the shoreline. It's on the continents that you're going to have deposition for coming from rivers and glaciers. It's in the continents that the waves are going to hit and create erosion. It's, it's in the continents that the volcanoes erupting are creating the ash which falls into the ocean. So the major, it's also near the continents that the majority of the nutrients are in the water and therefore the majority of the algae growth and animal life is at so when the majority of the ooze uh, either silica based or calcium carbonate based is going to be near the continents so sediment formation is for in the majority near the continents and that's why you get the continental rise which and then you get the abyssal plain which barely has any any sedimentation only a fine layer of sediment over over a uh, um, rock because the majority of the sediments, either inorganic or organic sources, are coming from the continents. Now, in the last video of this series, we're going to be talking about some physical characteristics or, or, or physical composition of, of the sediments and also about nodules. So I'll see you there on the next video.